episode is brought to you by Spick and Span Cleaning Services, owned by Tang, a mom of three, and she specializes in commercial and residential cleaning. Follow her on Instagram at Spick and Span underscore LLC, and you can send her a free video consult so she can tell you how much your work is going to be. Welcome back to the Mommies Anonymous podcast, everybody. This is episode eight, and I don't know what the title is, but we're about to talk about mom guilt. All of the different things that make us feel less than and we projecting this stuff onto ourselves and nobody else really even cares as much as we do. So, you know, it's just like, I think that it's a vicious internal battle with who we thought we were going to be as moms and who we actually are or what, you know, all the challenges that come up and really what, what we realize doesn't really matter anymore once we are moms. But we do feel guilty about it. We feel guilty about You know, when the kids stay up late, when they're tired in the morning for school, we're like, dang, why didn't I do that? But it's like, we can't always do everything better. Um, We're just doing our best, but I know I feel a lot of mom guilt when I know I do stuff like crazy. This week, for instance, was it like Friday? I didn't want to get out the car because it was raining a little tiny bit. And so Dez went to go, he had to go get the kids from daycare by himself and I'm sitting in the car like I can see him from the window and just literally me being lazy sitting there not wanting to get wet like I would melt or something and I told Dallas to go help Diz get the babies out of daycare Dallas is not as helpful as I thought but I should have known um he was at the top of the stairs with Dash trying to walk down the stairs with him and Dash fell down all four of the concrete stairs and it's like I felt terrible and now I end up having to jump out of the car anyway in the rain run to him because now he's sobbing when I could have just initially gotten out the car to begin with so I felt like a terrible mother and a terrible person and he was crying and I'm like now I don't even know if he has a head injury and we'll never know because I'm not taking him he seemed fine we didn't let him go to sleep he was he recovered um perfectly fine but it's just like you never know and of course you're gonna think the worst and of course you're gonna you know think of all the things you could have done differently but it's like, why do we put this on ourselves when we have so much else to think about? Like, I know when I, you know, when you're pregnant, you're thinking, oh, I want to breastfeed for a year. I want to do this. This is how I'm about to, you know, I know it's so much better for the babies to get the nourishment. They're not going to get sick. So you have this whole plan. You got your pump. You got your bags to store the milk in. You got all the different tools. You got your nipple cream and all your all that nonsense that comes with breastfeeding. And it's terrible for a lot of people in the beginning. And I'm not going to say... I would say everybody because I can't imagine whose nipples aren't cracked. I can't imagine your nipples not bleeding either. But that shit was terrible. Honestly, like, besides the warm and fuzzy feeling of, like, being able to nourish your little baby, that was all I got. Like, it was just, like, a little warm and fuzzy feeling for a second. But I quickly realized that Dash's appetite, like, I nursed all of them, but only for a couple months. Denim wouldn't latch right. Um... I think he was a little tongue-tied in the beginning, so then I had to pump a lot more for him. But pumping for him meant, you know, he would wake up while I'm pumping. So now I got this fresh bottle, and you're already ready to eat it. And it's like, I thought I was going to have some on reserve. I've never had one bag of stored milk ever. Like, and that was devastating. I see all these moms on Instagram with their extra storage fridge full of milk, and then I just feel like a a failure because I'm not a cow. And, you know, it's like my... I'm, I'm mad at the baby for being hungry again. I'm mad when anybody wakes up the baby because all they're going to want to do is eat, especially at that age. Uh, Dash is humongous. He's like twice the size of a normal one-year-old. So imagine how he was as an infant. He used to be nursing just for fun, like I was a snack or like a pacifier or something. And his appetite just increased so much. So I quickly made a decision not to breastfeed him anymore, but I didn't really know... I didn't know that I was doing a good job. I thought that each breast had eight ounces of milk in it, okay? So I thought, or should have. So I thought that when you pumped, you would get a full bottle of milk. So when I would just get them little driplets, I'd be like, wow, like, that's crazy. What a waste. But that's what it was supposed to be, you know? And it would just grow and grow and grow. But I just got so discouraged. And not trying to go to the blogs and read, you know, all these other moms loving breastfeeding. And, you know, I just felt... I just felt really bad. I did not feel like I could keep up. I didn't feel like I was eating well enough. I knew I wasn't drinking enough water. I knew I wasn't doing everything I was supposed to be doing. So naturally, I'm like, every time the kid gets sick, I think it's because I stopped breastfeeding. 
every time they have a runny nose, it's like, you should have breastfed a little bit longer and hung in there. And I see these other moms that are still breastfeeding and really hanging in there. And it's like after a year and I'm like, wow, they're doing great. And then you see the moms that are like giving their five-year-old glasses of breast milk. And it's like, my, my titties have dried up ages ago. Like, this is not, it's nonsense. Like, I just didn't know. I mean, everybody's experience is different, but I definitely thought I was contributing to why it wasn't working for me. But there is another thing called being touched out that I just learned about. Like when you're tired and you're exhausted from constantly being touched and constantly being pulled at by your children. And it's more common like to start while you're nursing because then the baby is always on you. And, you know, they pull at your other nipple and they pull at your skin and at your hair and at your ears like you would. It's easy to be overstimulated by that. And imagine if you have other children that are also trying to sit on your lap and walking all over you and poking you and everything. Like, I didn't even want to be touched by anybody, and Dez included. I'm not trying to be touched after nursing and having these kids walking all over me like I'm a jungle gym all day. Like, I just need time and space, like, to be, like, you know, by myself. But the kids are just, like, everywhere. And what are you supposed to do? And that's one of the reasons why I didn't really know that was a contributing factor to why I didn't enjoy breastfeeding so much. I didn't learn about that until, you know, the other day. And I read an article from a mom on um, Twitter. She calls herself the super, supernova mom. And she's a positive parenting expert. And she's putting out all these things like feeling touched out. What does that feel like? What does that look like? What does it feel like to... Um, when people are just coming up to you and saying, oh, you're going to miss these days. You're going to miss when they want all these cuddles. And it's like, am I really... You know, I really think I'm going to be, I'm going to enjoy motherhood much more when everybody has boundaries. <laughs> like, we can hug each other, but then it's like, it's not just always on top of me. But then I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty about having those feelings of wanting space and feeling those, uh, having those feelings of wanting to sit in the bathroom by myself and just, you know, not have kids banging on the door and not have kids touching. And Like, it's just so... It's so intense. I, and I definitely know. I feel like a terrible mom that I don't want these kids touching me because I know people, like we said, would love to have kids. And some people, you know, it just feels like I'm ungrateful sometimes. But I do think that my feelings are valid in that you, everybody wants a personal bubble. There was a study that said that moms, uh, parents in general, it was done in 2018, parents only get 32 minutes to themselves a day and that was before the pandemic so imagine how much it is now it's like probably way less time so not having any time for yourself it does take a toll on you not being able to sleep takes a toll on you and so your temperament like when you yell I feel super guilty when you see your little the little eyes water after you've raised your voice at them you know it's like why can't you know I don't want to be a mean mom I don't want to be an angry mom, but sometimes these kids need a little yelling at him. So I just feel like the mom guilt thing, we have to kind of release ourselves from that. But there's a lot of things in society that make us feel like we're not doing it right if we're not doing this. And not knowing what breastfeeding is supposed to look like or what breastfeeding could look like. And, you know, it could be this much milk or it could be this much milk or you're not doing a bad job if you don't have enough. Maybe I would have kept doing it a little bit longer. Um, and if my kids weren't so grabby, I might have been able to tolerate it a little bit um, longer. But I definitely, I wish I could stop connecting their illnesses to my failures as a mom. Um, me thinking that, you know, me smoking is going to negatively impact them. And if it does, I mean, there's all type of smoking that goes on in, in the world that they're going to see. And it's not just me. So I know I definitely feel bad that I smoke weed. That's definitely a mom guilt factor, but there's a lot of can cannabis moms out there that need it to keep us where we're at, keep us level-headed, deal with that anxiety, give us a little moment away, give us a little break. But why do we feel bad for needing a break? And whatever that break looks like, no, I don't want to do yoga. I just want to smoke a blunt. You know, that's what I need. And it just because it looks different to a different mom or it looks different to somebody else it doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong it's like whatever I need to get my mind right I don't have the time to do all the self-care things right now getting my nails done and stuff so 
my time away is just to shower or just smoking or just, you know, hiding in the bathroom. Like that, that might just be my thing right now, going to the bakery. But I try not to, well, I, I mean, I'm trying starting now not to put that much pressure on myself because it's just immense and you start drowning from the mom guilt. So I don't know if there is like a mom button that's supposed to turn on where you're supposed to start liking all type of stuff that you hated at one point. Like, I don't really like hearing stories from children. Like, you know, like I wouldn't, if a child ran up to me and started telling me a story, I'm instantly going to zone out, right? And it doesn't make a difference if it's my child or not, you know? So my kid comes, Dallas tells stories and they are the longest version of every story. Like, it's the longest and he and he has a bit of a stutter so it's elongated further because of that but it's like the stories are everlasting and repetitive so I completely zone out with all of the other things that I have in my mind and it's like am I not supposed to feel like that why do I feel guilt when I do that why do I feel guilt when I do anything that's just a natural reaction like I don't I didn't like okay like it's just so hard I'm I just it's like when people say that you just have all these baby hormones and you're now just going to be so in love with the baby as soon as it comes out. Like, yes, you love this other part of you, right? But you don't love all of the irritating things that come along with it. Like the crying babies and the, the diaper changes, all those things that happen, you're not a fan of those things. And so it does make your experience a little negative. So when I talk and I complain sometimes about motherhood, I feel guilty because it's like, I know I'm supposed to be overjoyed by this, but why am I not? Which is kind of why I always feel like I'm doing it wrong. Because I think that maybe because other people aren't saying that they don't enjoy those things too, I feel I feel like I'm the only one. Like, I, everybody else is like, wow, this is so great. Like, I'm loving this mom life. Like, mom, like, you know, hashtag, like, I just really am not enjoying it sometimes. And I feel guilty for saying that. People come to me and they say, wow, you're being so vulnerable on the podcast. Like, I wouldn't even be able to say that. Aren't you worried about what people are going to say? And I'm not really worried. I just think that I'm not I'm not by myself and it. I'm not I'm not alone. I just think I'm the only one that's saying it out loud that I hate I hate play dates. I hate like I don't want to go and be a PTA person. I don't want to do that right now because I'm I would rather be at work and I know how some kids feel that their kids worked a lot so it's like I know that my kids might feel like that later but I also know that there's another way that my kids should live and they shouldn't be living in I'm not gonna say, we're not in poverty by any means but it's like I, I want more for them so that requires sacrifice so it's not I try not to I try to think that what I'm doing is making sacrifices for them rather than trying to feel guilty about it. Like these are just sacrifices for the now. I'm going to enjoy this more later when I have more time and more money to enjoy them. You know, like now that I had kids early, I don't regret having them by any means. I just regret not being more prepared and being more knowledgeable. So I'm trying to learn this stuff now. I'm not trying to um, fault myself for not being prepared, though. Like when... You know how you buy fast food one too many times for your kids in a week and now you feel guilty because you know they're supposed to be having so many vegetables or whatever and I just feel bad for stuff like that but when am I supposed to have the time to do it when am I supposed to have the time to make home cooked meals for everybody and go grocery shopping and you know have enough energy I just don't have it in me sometimes I am not my best self all the time so that makes me it makes it really hard to be the best mom that I can be if I'm not my best self. So something that I do feel guilty about, um, which is why I started going to therapy, was because I just didn't feel like I was my happiest self. And so me being snappy with my kids is because I'm like, you know, not OK and um, not as happy as I could be, not in the best place. So I'm trying to do something about it. So now that mom feel, I'm trying to see there's different things that you can fix and you can, you know, make adjustments about like not cooking dinner every night. You don't need to do that. But if you're not feeling happy, then try to do therapy. Try to like have a mom play date, not a kid play date. Hang out with a mom that you can just talk to and vent. That's some free therapy. I think that is like my favorite thing to do now because there's it's another person that can relate to you, another person that's sharing your same anxieties and your same fears and you guys can kind of lean on each other to kind of 
get that support you need sometimes because it's so easy for people to tell you to go to therapy if they're not paying the bill or you know or even making the time to get on the phone it's hard for me to talk on the phone um because my kids are always around or like me and Dez are together a lot of times so I try not to talk on the phone when we're around each other because now I'm you know kind of moving my conversation over here and you know, I don't want him to have to hear the same stories over and over and over about even with the stuff with the shop. This is getting very, it's very frustrating for him to hear, you know, how all this stuff is making me feel. And then I have different people asking me like, okay, well, how is it going? How is it going? And he's with me every step of the way. And he has to continuously hear this over and over. So it's kind of like me talking to my therapist feels like another thing. Like, I don't want this to even be worried about the same things that I'm worried about because I feel like I kind of project my my fears onto him. There's a lot of things he did he's not even afraid of until he knows that it's bothering me and then now that's another worry for him and I think that's kind of why sometimes we don't talk to our partners about certain things because we don't want them to worry like this is the part I tell you I'm okay you know I'm I'm telling you that everything's okay it's kind of like you're telling your kids like everything's fine everything's fine but you're not fine And that mom guilt builds up and then it becomes something more and you start like it bubbles up and you feel like you're not a good mom as a whole. And there might just be little instances where you just are falling short or where you're not, you know, measuring up to the mom you thought you were going to be. But as your kids don't even notice, like the kids don't care. They love fast food. You know, like where you're sitting here and you're beating yourself up, the kids are like, yes, we get a happy meal. So it's like you have to consider the fact these these little memories and these little moments are perceived different from the little humans that are around us so like give yourself some grace give your partner you know give them the chance to help you through it because they might not even know you're dealing with this like me telling Dez I didn't like the kids eating so much fast food and I don't like ordering Uber Eats so much he's been cooking way more now because he's like okay well if you're going to be tripping about it that's going to make you feel bad I don't care I can put a pot roast in so it's like those little things are kind of helping just voicing it like the podcast really has us sitting around talking about these issues and I'm noticing within my household just different things changing just because I'm expressing what makes me feel bad and Dan's sitting here like I never cared about you cooking every night I never cared about cooking at all like I just thought you wanted chicken I was like oh damn you know you never know but talking to him and talking to my friends like me talking to Jess and telling her how I want her to like Dallas to come over there sometimes just so he can have some time away from the babies she hears me and she wants to help out with him more and like kind of step up in that way even though Dallas isn't her godchild she's just gonna take him she has the space now she has her own place now so that's what he needs and she knows that Dallas is kind of standoffish but he needs somebody to give him attention but at a distance so just talking about these things that are making me sad I hate that we don't have more space for them but my friends have space and my you know he can go to his friend's house my mom has space so like me voicing my little guilt and my little sorrows are kind of helping me get my problem solved and my kids are kind of experiencing a different type of motherhood like I'm not as frustrated I'm not as angry I'm not as sad Um, I do have other things that are frustrating me right now like work but definitely not bringing that to the kids kind of like our parents we didn't I didn't know a lot of stuff that was going on besides me being nosy I wouldn't know a lot of the issues my mom and my dad and my stepfather they didn't come to me saying you know Jordan this is what's going on so I kind of want to keep that parent children you know hierarchy there with they don't with a need to know basis I'm not trying to make Dallas worried about money you know, I don't want him to be worried about work. He doesn't know what's going on at the bakery. He just knows about my future plans. Like, when I talk to Dallas, I'm like, listen, mommy figured out how we're going to, you know, make these vending machines pop, right? This is how many vending machines I want to have by the time you're 10. So talking to him about our five-year plans, talking to him about our three-year plans, I might not know what's going on right now, and that might make me feel guilty for being unsure in this phase of my life it makes me feel unsure for this motherhood phase I don't know what's going to happen I don't know when we're going to move into a bigger house when he asks when he can have his own room but I can tell you something about something a little bit more far out like I know we're going to get it like we have a plan me and daddy have been working towards something and kind of reassuring him without making him feel the sense of 
not knowing right now. Like, I'm just trying to reassure you with my faith. Like, I'm talking to you with the faith behind it, not with the, with the plan. Because I don't know how we're getting through these 30 days, but I know God's going to get us through all the rest of the days, you know. He's going to get us through all the days. I just don't know yet. So I just tell him what I do know. And what I do know is that me and Daddy figured out the plan. And God's got the plan. So that kind of helps us. Um, the transparency and the mom guilt is the cure. Is being transparent with your partner and your kids and yourself. So that's what I got. My two-year-old is not potty trained yet denim and he also just got off of his bottle maybe a couple weeks ago when we took them out of school because we were trying to save some money um so Dez had them at home while I was at work he he stayed home while I came in and he got them off their bottles right away I'm too nervous and uh not nervous I just don't like all their crying so I would let them use the bottles forever because the weaning off process requires tears and my thing is just give them what they want so they can stop crying. If they're tired, I just want them to go to sleep. I just want them to be comforted. Um, you know, they never sucked on pacifiers, so it's not like they have that to comfort themselves. So it's just milk. Um, but now they're little baby cows. And so now, you know, my, me in my head, knowing that humans shouldn't be drinking cow's milk anyway, I'm sitting here super guilty about that all along. Like, ah, oh, you're giving your kids cow's milk. Like, gross. But I still did it because there's always a necessary evil the other thing that I know that I feel bad about because I do too much research. I told y'all I'm a conspiracy theorist. So think about vaccines. That type of stuff scares me. The um, research that I've done connecting some vaccines like the polio vaccine and stuff. And um, one of those other ones that's normal for them to get within the first year of their life. Being connected with little black boys and autism. There's a direct connection in some vaccines and autism. Now, I have gotten my kids vaccines, but I am still very cautious and I feel the same way about them. I do know that, you know, I have faith. So my thing is I'll pray that my children aren't the ones that have to suffer or, you know, that nobody has to suffer from it. But I just know that there are odds, but there's not much I can do to fight every wrong thing that can go like anything that can go wrong. I can't fight it. But I try to be informed. I try to learn as much as I can now so I can at least have good information i just i didn't want my doctors to give the babies all of the vaccines at the same time well shots or whatever and they agreed i know they were a little hesitant to my request i'm like i don't want to give this little tiny baby you know six shots in one day or like all of this before he leaves the hospital just give him the hep b or whatever shot and then we'll keep it moving but i didn't want him to be all vaxxed up and having all these chemicals in him that I don't really know. And y'all aren't going to give me an ingredients list on what's in this vaccine. And if I look too deeply into it, I'm not going to want you to get it at all. I'm really too scared to do much research. Just like all of these um, kid baby products that aren't really baby products. Like they have, they're not as tear free as they say they are. The kids' eyes are still burning. They don't have, you know, they're not as honest as they say sometimes about these ingredients. But when we still use them like as much as we know about johnson and johnson why are we still using johnson and johnson y'all we can't help it because they smell so good after like it's like a real it's a i don't know how to separate myself from the habit of just buying you know the lavender johnson and johnson's baby wash because i'm trying to get them babies to sleep you know i saw somebody i did a uh, a questionnaire of what some things that you feel guilty about somebody said you know the melatonin gummies they said they kind of overdo the gummies now I have given my kids the melatonin gummies, but I think that they are immune to them. My kids, it doesn't even work. So I stopped. But some people are maybe hope for doing it. I heard that, you know, there's a lot of negative things, but we need to go to sleep. There's also negative things that come when the parent doesn't sleep for a long time. You know, there's also negatives to how kids act when they're overtired. So, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. But there are a lot of, there's a lot of mom shaming going on. A lot of, you know, moms should and shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't curse in front of them. You shouldn't do this in front of them, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, a lot of times you could take that advice. It's hard to take it from people that don't have kids. Um, I think people that don't have kids have good advice, though. I just, you don't want to hear it. I really will take the exact same advice and listen to it differently if the person has a kid. Especially if the person has, like, more kids than me. And I'm like, wow, you super know what you're talking about. Like, you just want to know. I need to know why you think you have more 
credibility you know and if you've experienced what i'm experiencing tell me why you think this is this isn't good but don't just tell me because you said so or whatever i don't like that i need real facts because my kids don't act right and so when people are saying oh it's because you don't do this or whatever you need a kitchen table how am i going to have a kitchen table and they don't sit down but then maybe if they sat if we had a table they would sit but that makes me feel bad that i don't have a big enough house for a kitchen table you know so now i feel guilty about that why come into my house and see the space that we have and think that I'm doing anything? I'm, I want to have a table. I always ate dinner with my family every single night growing up until I graduated from high school, for real. So it is an adjustment for me not to have that with my kids. And, I mean, I say this all the time so y'all know I feel a way about it. But it's like, I really want a kitchen table. I can't wait till I have one so I can take a picture and show y'all. Because it's like, I, um, I feel really guilty. But they're little and they don't sit down anyway. So I keep trying to remind myself of that. Like the kids keep seeing like my kids don't know what a fancy birthday party looks like. So when I'm thinking I'm not doing enough and not doing a fancy enough birthday party, they don't even have anything to compare it to. Like they're not even thinking about it like I'm thinking about it. I make cakes for a living. And when I don't make my kids a birthday cake, I feel terrible, terrible. Like you had energy to make every other kid in the city a cake, but not your kids. But I know... Well, some, I mean, I know this and then I still feel guilty, but I know that my kids would rather have me there than a cake. And if I'm making the cake, that means I'm going to be late or I'm going to be, you know, covered in frosting, not my best self, not my happiest self if I was making a cake all day or whatever. Like, I just, sometimes I'd rather just show up. I'd rather, I want to throw the party instead of, you know, being the cake person. I just want to, I know my kids don't even like cake like that. They don't, kids don't care about cake in general. So... But I definitely did feel guilty. People are like, oh, I can't wait to see the cake. And I'm like, ain't no cake. <laughs> because I'm here. Like, we had a party. I planned my kid's birthday party in seven days last year because I didn't know if I was going to have the money. I didn't know if they are going to have a party at all. But we, you know, I don't know what came through or I was just using quad pay, which is my best friend. I might have just learned about quad pay at that time. So I was able to order some decorations for them and just do a little something. But... I was feeling terrible up until the time because it's their birthday and it's Dash's first birthday, so I have to do something for him. But on Dash's birthday, y'all, and I tell you, I sobbed. Like, I was so sad. I was like, this has been the hardest year of my life. You know, this has been the longest 365 days because Dash was really, 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 really colicky. And he was just so bad, and I didn't know what was wrong with him. He's so much better now, but... I didn't know what was wrong with him, and I just felt like I was doing something wrong. Maybe this is because I didn't pour into him enough. I didn't sing songs when I was pregnant because I was over being pregnant because I just had denim. I stopped taking my prenatal vitamins halfway through because I forgot and couldn't find the ones that I liked. And then they spilled in the bottom of my purse, and it's just like, you know, like all of the things that can go wrong. And it's like, that's why you don't have enough breast milk. That's why he's, you know, like all, all the things that I could have done wrong. That's what's going on in my head. You know, I'm just trying... I'm trying to separate the mom guilt like in my head because I know it's myself putting it on myself you know like it's we know that we're our own worst enemy but if we're our own best cheerleader then we can change the narrative like be make sure you pat yourself on the back just as much as you're tearing yourself down so just as many things that you might be doing wrong maybe we can't cure the mom guilt but we can start doing the, doing the mom like high five or some you know like give yourself a pat on the back for the things you are doing I sat down and watched a Disney movie yesterday, y'all, with Dallas. I hate those type of things. I hate kid musicals at the end of listening to kids doing kid stuff all day. But yesterday, I did it. And he enjoyed himself. And we watched Encanto instead of watching uh, Chris Rock get slapped at the Oscars. That's what I was doing. But I know my kid had an excellent Sunday night. We had a movie night and no mom guilt for me. That's all I know. And um, that's my pat on the back for the day. It's, it's, you know, Dash fell down the stairs and we got back up and we're all dancing to Encanto. So give ourselves a break. Give yourself a pat on the back. We're doing as good, a, as good of a job as we can. And we can always do better tomorrow. So another source of mom guilt for me is having mental illness at all. Like being depressed and basically being predisposed to postpartum and dealing with that and not really knowing where to put my feelings all the time or you know being snappy being sad being distant crying a lot like I feel like I am 
less than because I'm dealing with all of this. I feel really sad and I'm beating myself up and it's easy to slip into that depression if you're, you know, the mom guilt will take over you if you are also depressed because now you start feeling bad about yourself and then you start thinking about all of the bad things about yourself. Like you hate how you look, you hate how you walk, you hate how you talk, you hate how you, you know, like how you problem solve. Like all the things that you hate about yourself start coming to you. And that dark hole of depression is so deep and you fall down so fast and it's like a slippery slope. So I try not to even get there. But because I am depressed and I am dealing with depression and I do have anxiety, I am a different kind of mom and that makes me guilty that makes me feel like I should not have had kids because why did you have kids if you're going to be a depressed mom why did you have kids if you're going to be a suicidal mom why are you going to have kids if you're going to be feeling like this because other people you know it's, it's kind of like, like my brain is broken that's what it feels like it's not like if you I don't feel like I can care for them as well as I should be able to sometimes but I'm working through it like therapy and you know psychiatrists and all the people that are trying to help get my brain chemistry right it's still like I have a team of people trying to make my brain work um well enough to be a mom and that sucks to not feel like I just have it in me like it sucks to not feel good enough and not feel like I have the tools and the right amount of serotonin like in the right amount of all those things like why why am I imbalanced if it just sucks and then the thing that will balance me out I just started some new um, anxiety medicine. It makes me tired. It had me knocked out at 8 p.m. for the whole rest of the night. I never seen another nothing. I didn't hear another baby cry or nothing all night. But I can't be... They, they told me I'm supposed to take that three times a day when I have a panic attack or if I have an anxious day or whatever. I can't imagine being that tired. They told you can't drive, so now I'm not able to hop in a car and go pick my kids up. So it just makes me more anxious to take my anxiety medicine. So now I don't... I'm not able to get the help that I need. If I had, if I didn't have kids, I feel like I would be able to take care of my mental health. Um, but I'm already here. So, and I didn't realize I had mental health issues until after I had kids. So now what? What do I do? I know, I know I've know, i known I had ADHD for a while, but I couldn't take Adderall while I was pregnant. So I can't be as productive while I'm pregnant. So that makes me feel bad. I can't take my medicine um, for my anxiety they are it's like the opposite of my um my adhd medicine is the opposite of my anxiety medicine so they kind of do the opposite thing one makes me tired and one makes me focused so i just feel like they cancel each other out which is why i smoke but it's the only thing that i can do to just get me a little less anxious and get me a little bit um a little bit calmer so i can calm down an anxiety attack or a panic attack because they've been happening so much more frequently now there's so many things that are out of my control and that's what triggers me like not being in control um it's super triggering the pandemic that type of control the kids you get home like when not having enough money to pay for daycare means that my day is no longer as productive as it is when they can go to school um now it's like all of the many things that the kids do differently all day they fall down they hurt themselves now we can't go and do dot 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 without you know with the kids it's like everything all the changes I cannot handle them sometimes and then I spiral I don't like having to use the plan h because I already went through plan a b c d e like that is so irritating I come up with so many thorough plans all night only for the kids to wake up with uh you know a fever it's like what the heck so like not the kids bedtime routine terrible worst time of the day I'm exhausted they're exhausted but they feel the need to cry themselves to sleep and to cry out for their daddy 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 like what do you even need from him what do you need like what they don't even want anything and it's just so infuriating that I can't have a single minute after it's supposed to be their designated bedtime for me to decompress and you cry until you fall asleep at 11 30 for whatever reason like denim is doing the sleep regression right now and it's like we're not supposed to be using melatonin gummies so his he just be sitting up crying (laughs) like what are we supposed to do we're doing lavender baths we're doing you what all the things lavender spray i'm trying to do the natural stuff y'all not melatonin them down because they're immune like i said denim used to think that they were like regular fruit snacks and he still wouldn't be tired so i'm like okay this doesn't work but i feel terrible about 
my want to sit in the car until after their sleep. I literally, as soon as we lay them down at 8 p.m., I want to sit in the car till 10 and do whatever work I need to do on my computer because I only have about two more hours that I want to stay up and then I want to go to sleep. But then there's times we have to stay up till 2 a.m. to get emails done because they've been whining all night long. And so when I'm like, I really need a break, when I'm, when I'm feeling guilty for needing a break, I got to give myself some grace because, A, I haven't slept, so I'm exhausted. Just like any human being or any living thing needs sleep in order to be functional. And so I know that I'm not just being snappy with them or frustrated with dads and frustrated with work just for no reason. I haven't slept. I'm not eating well enough. The kids cry. They are irritating. Nobody wants to say their kids are irritating, but they are because why are you crying so much? I just want them to tell me what they need so I can give them what they need and what they want, you know? But I think Denim's kind of getting afraid of the dark, but um, it's like we can't let them watch TV all night. You know, you're giving your kids screen time. It's like, oh, screen time's horrible. So now there's mom guilt, too. It's like the mom shaming that go that turns into mom guilt. You see one time that the screen time is about to F up our kids, right? And now every time we need a little break and we give our kid a tablet... We're feeling guilty as at, at the same time as us getting what we need to get done done. So why does every activity that moms deal with, good or bad, come with a level of guilt? Like when you're out with your friends, as much fr- fun as you're having out, as drunk as you get, as cute as you look, people are always going to say, where are your kids? Just to make you feel good. Like, what do you mean? They're not in the car. You know, they're with somebody responsible and I'm here and I look good or whatever. So it's like. Everything is always kind of wrapped up in a mom, you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing this. So that's frustrating. And I know that it builds up. So it makes you not want to go anywhere because I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear when I tell my mom that I'm tired, her be like, well, didn't you just go out with your friends? It's like, dang, it's a different type of tired. It's a different type of need. It's a different type of free time. You know, I don't get off days from work. Um, I don't get I don't have paid time off. I don't have a self-care day. I don't have a whatever mental health day. I love that business businesses and other um, like corporate is now letting people take off for mental health days and even schools are letting them take off for mental health days. That is so good that that's being encouraged and that's being normalized because you just need a day and you shouldn't have to explain why. But there's so many reasons why kids your, your spouse or anybody is going to get on your nerves and being like proximity like come on we want our own bubble we want our own space we want our own identity and we might not have all those things so we might just need a break for a minute right now we might just need a blunt we might just need to take a shot we might just need to take a nap but if nobody you know listens when we're saying this and they just guilt you like you should love being with your baby Sometimes that's not enough. I need to heal. I need my brain to heal. I need my mind to heal. I need to miss my children so I can want to see them. Like picking them up from daycare feels so much different than coming home and, you know, or seeing them all day and seeing them after they take a 60 second nap. Like it feels different. I need you to take a nap so I can be so excited to see you when you wake up. When they take them 30 minute naps, they don't feel the same. So. I just, I know I feel guilty for my anxiety. I know I feel guilty for choosing the path that I chose as far as work, being an entrepreneur. Um, I couldn't have planned on not being anxious. I couldn't have planned on not being depressed. So I tried to give myself a little bit of grace, but I feel guilty regardless because I just want to be better and I want to be happier and I want to be healed for them, but it's coming. So a little update for the bakery and the five day notice. It's really trifling what's going on here, guys. Um, It's a lot of unfolding, me reading over my lease a million times and reading that verbal agreements mean absolutely nothing. Kind of learning my lesson the hard way of um, being a young entrepreneur and and a woman, and I kind of feel like I'm being taken advantage of um, a little bit and kind of being, I'm not going to say mistreated, but I think that they feel like they can pull one over on me. And I do have a lawyer and I do have a lot of counsel and I do have a lot of help. Um, And the people that are advising me, you know, and helping me through this, and especially my community, us doing the GoFundMe and being able to raise right now, it's been, I've been able to raise almost $10,000 in the GoFundMe toward the $25,000 that's needed to save the bakery. And this morning I get a call from 
Karen Jordan from ABC7 News, and she's like, I want to do, um, uh, what is it called? An interview with you about your GoFundMe and what's going on with the bakery and what's going on with, um, you know, just the, the statistics of how many businesses have failed during this time are, you know, they're so loud. It's 600,000 businesses, and that I'm, I, I know that that's, I keep saying it over and over, but that is such a humongous number, and that's, it represents so many more people than just the 600,000 businesses, because my business means more than just me. It's something for my husband, and for my three children, and for my family, and for my community. It means something. So everybody's business had a bunch of people supporting them, too, and it's very sad to see, you know, what happens when we are disadvantaged, and we don't have as much money as the next person, and COVID has affected us all, and I feel like there should just be a little bit of grace um, given. I plan on giving them the money. I just they I just told them I needed time. So even right now, I'm doing the GoFundMe. I didn't know that ABC was going to do an interview on me. Maybe this will be what it takes to get the rest of the money. But I just, I'm really walking by faith, and that was just a thing like her calling. If my bakery is perfectly clean. I had my, my friend from Spick and Span Cleaning Services come and clean up my shop last week just so it can be ready for anything. You never know. You never know who's in a call, but she called me and she's going to use her platform to be able to help me. I've been on ABC7 before with my business and it is going to be sad if we have to see my business shut down. And um, it's going to affect way more than myself. And I'm, I'm praying every day that something something's got to give i'm trying to do right by my landlords i understand the position that they're in as well but i do think that it's really wrong to be told to give an extreme amount of money in five days I, that makes me feel like you don't really want the money and you just want me out and i don't understand that so it's a lot going on it's still developing but we're still working toward and i just want to make sure i update you guys because now y'all are invested and I got y'all all in my business and everybody's helping and I appreciate it. But we are in real time trying to save this space and keep everything that we built and keep moving forward and not have to be displaced. Um, ideally, I will be able to stay in the space that we built and we are, you know, this is ours. Um, I mean, obviously not ours, it's just landlords, but me and Dez have put so much into this together. It feels different than the first shop. It feels like ours. So it's way more important to me. My kids, I feel like they have grown up here and we have a year and a half left on this lease and I would like to stay the rest of my lease and then move on to a storefront and do something. But I needed to, you know, kind of get my footing after COVID. So um, just keep keep us in your prayers and keep us in mind. And if you guys need to order some cake jars or something for any occasion, please let me know and go to the website so we can make some money. And keep it going. The date right now that they told us is April 28th. We pray on that date. We get everything that we need, guys, um, so we can keep everything going. But um, we have faith, and God didn't bring us this far to leave us. So, you know, that's all i got to say. But I'll see you guys next time. Like, subscribe, and follow us so you don't miss an episode, and you can stay up to date on everything, all things Mommy's Anonymous. All right, guys, see you next week.